something that I painted in a packet a few years ago in my holiday um, greetings packet, season's greetings. And it's, it was done originally on wood. I'm going to do it on a six by six uh, wrapped canvas. So this is a fun little sheet, but I'm going to do them a little bit bigger and we're going to have fun with them on this uh, six by six canvas. Okay. So, all right. So let's come down here and we're going to look at this canvas. So see how this is just really simply pounced on there. And I'm going to share something that I think is going to be even more fun. We're going to put some, um, diamond dust on here. I did that with my ornaments too. Okay, but it's got like a wood panel background. So it's very um, natural looking. Okay. All right, so let's get out our colors. I'm going to get some linen, which I didn't grab earlier. That's not it. Okay. So I need some linen, there we go, and some wicker white. So this is, I just put out um, real brown, and this is um, coffee latte, and then here we have some apple red, a little bit of berry wine, and I'm going to put the floating medium right on my plate here. Okay. All right. So what I want to do first is take a sponge. Okay. So I dampen my sponge with my fingers with some water and I'm going to pick up the um, linen. Okay. And we're just going to go all over with linen to start with the sponge. And this is a big profile. This is a, like an inch and a half profile, I think it's called, um, gallery wrap canvas. So I'm going to make sure I get all my sides here. And so all over with linen with my sponge. All right, now what I want to do next is create a bit of a wood grain. And so I'm going to pick up this real brown on the curved front of my sponge and kind of work that in on my plate. Okay. And so I'm going to come with this now um, vertically and pull down along the edge. All right. And then I'm going to create a little bit of movement. Little bits of brown. See there? Just a little bit of wood grain. You can turn the, the sponge the other way. Okay. So this sheep is going to take up a lot of, of the um, surface of the canvas. So I'm not going to get into too much detail with that. But I'm going to show you in just a minute uh, a little more that I do. I'm going to do a little bit of this wood grain on the sides as well. And continue off of the edges for the ones that go up and down. See there? Okay. Okay. So that's just real quick with the sponge. Then I'm going to fold this up and put it in my cubby here in my water. And then I'm going to take, I've got a 16 flat here. All right. And I'm going to take that, get some medium on it. All right, and I'm going to side load some coffee latte right here. All right, and what I'm going to do with that, let's come down just a little bit closer now, is I'm going to come inside here and shade a little bit of different colors. Let's come on this side of it. 
with the wood, a little different color brown. So we've got three different colors of brown right now working on this wood grain. We've got the linen in the background. We've got the real brown on top of the linen, kind of blending with it because it was on our sponge. And then we have this coffee latte and I'm going to streak down some of these edges here. So I'm creating kind of a knot right there with that. And I'm going to side load some of that real brown again. And I'm going to create some aging in the wood. Okay. So darken a few spots. I'm just sputtering that corner. Okay, can let me bring this up so you can really see. I'm coming in here and just sputtering like that. Like there's a crack. Right, and you can get wider at the bottom. See where it's wide right there? Right, and you can come off here. Right. And I'm going to do that one more up here so you can see. Get really wide with it so there's like a deep crack in the wood. Okay, so you can sputter that dark brown and see how that's really created an aged look. Do a little bit up here. You can tap it heavy with that corner. See there? Okay, and you can do it on the sides, etc. All right, so what I want to do now is just kind of get the um, look of my sheep. Okay. So I need a little bit of gray. So I'm going to, actually I've already got some black put out, so I will use that to get gray because I can't get at my gray bottle right now. There we go. Don't need much. All right, and I'm going to get my medium scruffy. Oh, before I do that, let me come in with... We got a 12 flat, no, 10 flat right here. We need to put his legs in first because those are going to be underneath his body. Okay, so I'm going to load real brown on a 10 flat. And then I'm going to side load some white on one edge. So I've got real brown and then white. All right, and so right down here, he's going to have these two little sticky legs that come out. And I feel like I need a little bit of black mixed in with that brown to make it a little bit darker than the wood grain. There we go. Okay. So he's got these short little legs holding up all that wool and this fluffy sheep. Okay. You don't have to worry about feet. We're just putting legs and they go right off. So now we're going to have another one obviously because he needs two at least you could probably do four if you wanted to be really correct about it but we're just going to do two okay because you're not going to see the other two they're directly behind these i promise all right now i'm going to take a little bit of white and just kind of sputter that along the left side of each of those legs Okay, so we got some legs he's standing up on. Okay, so now I'm going to take my medium scruffy and I'm going to load it with white. All white. Okay, and I'm going to get the shape of my sheep. Sheep shape. Sorry. That was a bad pun. Okay, so we're going to come along the bottom first. 
and then I'm going to leave about a finger space. He's a big guy. Maybe a little more. Probably should have used my big scruffy, but that's okay. Okay, so we're just going to pounce and fill that all in real quick. See, that's why I didn't want to spend too much time on that wick ring because <laughs> a lot of it was going to get covered up. All right, so now with that same brush and it's all loaded, I'm going to tap into a little bit of this licorice here and then come away from it so I can work it into a gray with that white. All right, a little more white. I don't want it real dark. And so underneath, on the bottom here, we want to come and darken that wool that's under the bulk of it like that and then you can kind of taper it off as it comes up the sides okay and then I also want to come in so his head's going to come right around in here and the ball of his hat's going to come right around in there so I'm going to create a dark area as a shadow where those are going to sit okay and then on this side of his head right in there okay his head's going to come right down in here now i'm going to come back and pick up fresh white all right and i'm going to come around and everywhere else i'm going to tap and do so i've got a little bit of that gray in there now it's going to lend to the texture as long as i don't over pounce it right I'm going to put some fresh white here and there make him fluffy okay all right now while this is wet we can come in with this diamond dust and I need another plate and so when you're sprinkling diamond dust it's important to do it over something so that it doesn't run all over all right so diamond dust is glass it's bits of ground glass okay and so what you do is you pour it on and then you let it run off like glitter okay so now he's very sparkly see that and that'll dry stuck to that paint and it won't come off you might have a little bit of residue but that's about it and then you just take what came off onto the plate and dump it back into your container and then hopefully you don't spill it anywhere and you're in good shape <laughs> so they come in this size container and the smaller three ounce containers okay it's called diamond dust and um you can get it at most craft stores Okay, now before I forget, I want to leave that space. I'm going to take off some of it where the head goes. Let me get that plate back here. Right, the head's going to come right in here. So it's still wet. I can kind of carve that right out of there. okay and then where the ball is going to go on the hat i'm going to carve that out too right in there okay so while it's still wet you can come in and take out what you don't need see there okay So at this point, then, I'm going to take my small scruffy. I did not just dip that in the water. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take my small scruffy, and I'm going to load that with white. This is going to help this ball to kind of stand out because it's going to be brighter white against this background. See there? It's okay if you get a little bit of that 
diamond dust in there, but there's the ball for the hat. Okay, and I meant to take it out, but for the rest of the hat that comes down here. There we go. Just get it before it dries and you're fine. So I'm just holding it over that plate so it catches the wet. Okay, so you just kind of shove it with your brush. There we go. Okay. All right, so now what we want to do is come in with the brown for the head. So I'm going to load, this is a 10 flat, I'm loading it with the real brown. And then I'm going to come over here and side load some white on one edge. All right, and so right in here, we're going to stroke the shape of the head, which is a big U shape. I still have some of that diamond dust in there. I thought the diamond dust would be a good idea, but maybe it's not. <laughs> no. Trial and error sometimes. There we go. So if you're picking it up, I'm just wiping it off on a paper towel and then coming back and getting fresh paint. Okay. All right. So the lighter edge of his head is on the left just like I did the lighter edge of his legs down here. Over periods of time, no, the diamond dust will not come off once it's adhered to that paint and the paint dries. You might have little bits of it, you know, like glitter comes off, but it's not gonna like peel off or anything like that. Okay. All right, so that's the shape of my head. And then we have ears. So there's an ear that comes out from underneath his hat, which is going to sit up here. So right there. So the ear comes down to a point and then comes back up. And on the other side, same thing. Ears going to come to a point. And I'm just going to push that diamond dust out of the way and then pull it back up. Okay. I wanted to get that diamond dust on before I did the head and everything because I didn't want it to stick to the brown parts, but maybe in, if you're going to do this on your own, a better way to do it might be to paint the brown parts, let them dry, and then repounce the um, wool. and let the diamond dust come on, okay? So there we have it. It's just looking a little rustic, that's all. <laughs> a little rough around the ears. We've all been there. All right, so now I want to paint my hat. Now the hat, all red to start. So I've got apple red on this 10 flat, all right? And the hat's gonna come under the ear and down to the ball, right in there. All right. And then from the top of the ear, it's going to come over this way and kind of sit on top of the head. So you're going to make these curves. I want to side load a little bit of the berry wine as I'm pulling these curves, it's going to create the 
shading between the folds there. See the very ones down. Can you see that? Okay, and then the top of the hat you're going to push and pull it over like that. Okay. I thought this was a real fun design. And it's this is simple to do, guys. You could do this with your kids as a fun little holiday um, project together. Or you can embellish it for more of a like a couple's night party, something like that. Okay. All right, so there's our hat. Now I want to come back to my small scruffy. I just put that one in the water, so I'm going to grab a fresh one. And I'm going to load that with the white again. Now, ideally this would be dry. Okay, so I might get a little bit of pink in here. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so you're just going to pounce that top of his hat right across. And I'm just going to add some fresh white in here. There we go. Let me get rid of that pink. Okay. So there we have our big woolly sheet ready for the holidays. And you can finish them. You can come in with a flat brush loaded with floating medium and you can side load some of that real brown. And maybe we come along this side here and shade underneath. And wiggle it as you do that so it's not flat. Okay. You can come all the way around. Oops. Here we go. That would be kind of fun. Now I'm not going to do the entire way around because the light might be would be hitting him on this side, but underneath, of course, not so much. And then maybe you just come right here with some of that brown and set that ground right there. Okay. Just do a little more shading around some of these darker parts. There we go. How cute is he? <laughs> or she? Alright, so now to finish finish, I'm going to take my toothbrush here. Not one I use, of course, but one I use for painting. Get some water in it and then come get some white. And we love to do the snow uh, fly specking. Alright, so I'm just going to put it right over my plate here as I do this. And you're just going to rake your thumb. And be careful how much water you get in it because it will be too runny. Okay, so now he's got a little snow falling. And clean that off my thumb. <laughs> Come in and get some inky brown. And there we go. Isn't he pretty? Look at the sparkle. Maybe hang him with a pretty red ribbon or something. If you do it small on a, on a tree, this could be a really pretty ornament for the tree this size. Definitely poofy. <laughs> so, okay. Well, that's my demo for tonight. Just a cute little fun sheep for the holidays. And I hope you enjoyed it.